Good morning, and welcome to St. Thomas the Apostle Parish. Today we celebrate the first Sunday in Lent. Our intention is for Geraldine Calaresco and Edna Holland. Our celebrant is our pastor, Deacon, um, excuse me, our celebrant is our pastor, Ed Mayer, assisted by Deacon Len Long. For those of you in the back of the church, in our hall, the screen is broken. However, you no, can. It isn't. It uh, is working. Oh. Sorry. Sorry, Patty. I totally forgot to tell you. Oh. Through the grace of God, it is working today. Okay. Everything is working. So praise God. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. God has made a covenant with us to lead us to the fullness of life. Though we may be unfaithful, he is always faithful. He sends his Son to take upon himself the wounds of our infidelities and his Spirit to wash us clean in baptism. Let us acknowledge and repent of our sins and believe in him who through his very own body and blood gives us eternal life. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary of the Virgin, all the angels and the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant, Almighty God, through the yearly observances of Holy Land, that we may grow in understanding of the riches hidden in Christ, and by worthy conduct pursue their effects through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, See, I am now establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you. All the birds and the various tame and wild animals that were with you and came out of the ark. I will establish my covenant with you that never again shall all bodily creatures be destroyed 
by the waters of a flood. There shall not be another flood to devastate the earth. God added, This is the sign that I am giving for all ages to come of the covenant between me and you and every living creature with you. I set my bow in the clouds to serve as a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow appears in the clouds, I will recall the covenant I have made between me and you and all living beings, so that the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all mortal beings. The word of the Lord. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. To those who keep your covenant. Your ways, O Lord, make known to me. Teach me your paths. Guide me in your truth and teach me. For you are God my Savior. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Remember that your compassion, O Lord, and your love are from of old. In your kindness, remember me because of your goodness, O Lord. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. Good and upright is the Lord. Thus he shows sinners the way. He guides the humble to justice, and he teaches the humble his way. Your ways, O Lord, are love and truth to those who keep your covenant. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Beloved, Christ suffered for sins once, the righteous for the sake of the unrighteous, that he might lead you to God. Put to death in the flesh, he was brought to life in the spirit. In it he also went to preach to the spirits in prison, who had once been disobedient while God patiently waited in the days of Noah during the building of the ark, in which a few persons, eight in all, were saved through water. This prefigured baptism, which saves you now, it is not a removal of dirt from the body, but an appeal to God for a clear conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers subject to him. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. The Spirit drove Jesus out into the desert. And he remained in the desert for 40 days, tempted by Satan. He was among wild beasts. And the angels ministered to him. After John had been arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the gospel of God. This is the time of fulfillment. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent and believe in the gospel, the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord. Good morning. First day, first Sunday of Lent. And welcome. So what is Lent? I heard Pope Francis today said, Lent is a journey back to God. Very simple. It's a journey back to God. Whatever is best for you to do to get there is the answer. What do you need to do? What do I need to do to get back to God? And I think out of all the years that I've had Lang, this is the most important for me, and I think for all of us and for our country, right? There's so many things that I'm dealing with, and I'm sure you're dealing with, that break my heart because of this virus. But even though my heart's broken, I have faith that we will get through it and will become even stronger. That God has a reason for allowing things to happen. We don't know why his mind is not like our mind, thank God, right? He's much smarter than us. So that journey back to God, what do we need to do? Well, we know we need to pray. I had a homily all done on my computer and my one and a half year old grand said got a new hammer for Christmas and he broke the computer. God bless him. <laughs> so and then I had it on my iPad and I lost that so I'm just going to talk to you from my heart and I think that's what God wants me to do. He doesn't want me to look at anything he wants me to just talk from my heart about Lent and what Lent means to me. And what should mean to you? Well, first of all, our lady said, and I've told you many times, that we need to do five things to get closer to her son, to get closer to Jesus, right? We need to pray. We need to pray from the heart. Like I've said many times, especially the rosary. So important. The rosary is the weapon for these times. And believe me when I tell you that it is. If you can't say the whole rosary, then just say a decade or a couple of Hail Marys or whatever. But pray from your heart. The second thing is to do what you're doing, go to Mass. Right? To go to Mass. Because that's where, that's the greatest prayer. Thank God for our priest. Without our priest, we don't have the Mass. So pray from the heart, go to Mass, and fast is the third thing. Fasting. I could speak hours about fasting, but Our Lady said that if you combine prayer and fasting, you will see great miracles. And I'll tell you about one of those miracles in a few minutes. The reason why I tell you about these things is because they still happen 2,000 years later. I'm tired of my students and and some of my family and friends saying, no, your religion is 2,000 years old. It's not relevant. That we have technology. Well, that's what my homily was about technology, how it's taking over what is important. We spend more time on these things than we do speaking to each other, than we do praying. Maybe that's why our Lord took that away from me today. So we need to pray, we need to fast, and sometimes fasting can be just giving up on things. Maybe a television show, maybe a dessert, or maybe giving up on sin. That's really important to give up on sin. And that takes me to number four, which is going to confession. And confession is 
something that a lot of people think is outdated, that we don't need it. It's the most underused sacrament in the church. You see hundreds of people coming to Mass and very few people going to confession. Our Lady said that we should go to confession once a month. And don't be discouraged or afraid because you keep repeating the same sin. We all do that. We all have things that we are addicted to. Food, gambling, pornography, whatever it might be, alcohol. We all have things that we're addicted to that we need to go to confession over and over and over again until our Lord takes it away. And sometimes, I've, I, read, I listened to one guy the other day, that after 30 years of drinking, he went to confession again after many times, and our Lord took that addiction away from him like this. He took it away. He never, ever had another temptation to drink. He's a good friend of mine. He became a deacon. And not only did he become a deacon, deacon but he now teaches AA, and he brings many, many people through that process. So there are miracles today. And then the fifth thing is to read Scripture. Just look at, open the Bible, maybe start in the New Testament and read a couple of verses, a couple of sentences. Our Lord, our Lord can speak to us through the Bible. He can. He can give us a message. He can give us a word. A couple of weeks ago, when I want to introduce, if you could stand for a minute, Emily Dipp, and she will be with her husband, um, initiated into the church on Easter Sunday. She's in an RCIA class, and we can face them. And so we can give her a Thank you. So she heard the same story, and I probably might exaggerate it a little bit. If I do, don't tell anybody, okay? But we had this guy come into class, and he gave his testimony of why he went through the RCIA process. And I can't do it justice, but I sat there and I cried. Because it was so incredibly powerful that here he was, a young man at Stockton State College who was addicted to drugs and alcohol, who was a great sinner according to him. Both of his parents were dead from addiction and he was sitting there on a Saturday, on the end of his bed, thinking of ways that he could take his life. Because of the pandemic, that he couldn't be around people, he had no one to talk to, his family was gone. And he was devastated. And also, he was an atheist. He did not believe in God at all. He didn't pray. He just sat there thinking of ways to end his life. And he was in that process, he heard a voice. And the voice said, I love you. I am with you. And without any kind of background in theology or CCD or religious education, he knew that it was Jesus Christ. This is in the 21st century, guys. This is not 2,000 years ago. This is now. And he got up and he began to pray in his own words because he didn't know formal prayer. And he also knew through his heart, through the word, that he had to become Catholic. It took a little bit of time for him to realize that, but he, didn't, he tried other churches, but he knew it was the Catholic Church because the Catholic Church is the real deal. This is where we have 100%, 100% of the truth. There's a lot of other churches. There's 35,000 other churches, Presbyterian, Baptist, Lutheran. There's nothing wrong with them, but we have a 100% of the truth. Peter was the rock that Christ built this church on. We still have a pope that goes through the lines of Peter. So he went to a local church in Galloway, a lady of perpetual help, and he talked to a priest after Mass. And he said, Father, I want to become Catholic, and told him his story. And Father, in his own words, said, you don't hear that every day. You don't hear that story every day, do you? 
Father Duda, who is now, what is he, Chancellor, I think, of Camden Diocese. So he went through the RCIA process and he had other miracles. And our Lord's been speaking to him about what the times that we are living in and what we should do. And Lent is a big time. It's a great time for that. I did have this saved. And it said, and you've probably heard these, these are some things that we should fast from. Fast from fear, feast on faith. Fast from despair, feast on hope. Fast from depressing news, feast on prayer. Fast from anger and feast on patience. Fast from negative thinking and feast on positive thinking. Fast from anger and feast on love. Fast from words that hurt and feast on words that heal. Fast from worry and feast on humor. And always remember that God is in control and that he loves you. Above, above all, we want to give up sin during Lent because we love Jesus. And when we give into temptation and sin, we hurt Jesus. Every time we sin, we are slapping Jesus. We are hurting him, even now. That is why we want to give up sin. And by dying to sin during Lent, may we rise to new life with Jesus at Easter. Amen. Well, we're going to have another election. And like Deacon Lennon said, we haven't had one for a while, so it's very nice to be able to have someone who's going to be baptized at the Easter Vigil in a long number of years, so that's great. Father Ed, Easter is drawing near, and so this catechumen, whom we now present to you, is completing her period of preparation. She has found strength in God's grace and support in her community's prayers and example. Now she asked, after the celebration of the scrutinies, they be allowed to participate in the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and Eucharist. And the one who is chosen in Christ, come forward together with, you, with the sponsor. Emily Dipp, with your sponsor, and your husband's taking their place now. God's Holy Church wishes to know whether this candidate is sufficiently prepared to be enrolled among the elect for the coming celebration. So I ask, first of all, to speak to the um, sponsor. Has she looked faithfully listened to God's word proclaimed by the church? Has she responded to that word and begun to walk in God's presence? Yeah. Has she shared the company of their Christian brothers and sisters and joined with them in prayer? And now I speak to you, my brothers and sisters in the assembly. Are you ready to support the testimony expressed about this catechumen and include her in your prayers and affection as we move towards Easter? And now, my dear catechumen, I address you. Your sponsor and teachers have spoken in your favor. The Church, in the name of Christ, accepts their judgment and calls you to the Easter sacraments. Since you have already heard the call of Christ, you may now express your response to that call clearly in the presence of the whole Church. Therefore, do you wish to enter fully into the life of the Church through the sacraments of baptism, confirmation, and the Eucharist?
While she's writing, I'd like to tell you that we have three other candidates, so we have four, which is pretty good for this little parish in these times. So I'm very, very blessed. We're very, very blessed. And they're all very good candidates. Emily, I now declare you to be a member of the elect, to be initiated into the sacred mysteries at the next Easter Vigil. Thanks be to God. And God is always faithful to those he calls. Now is your duty, as it is ours, both to be faithful to him, to return, and to strive courageously to reach the fullness of truth, which your election opens up for before you. Sponsor, you have spoken in favor of this catechumen. Accept her now as the chosen of the Lord and continue to sustain through your loving care and example until she comes to share in the sacraments of God's life. Okay, we'll let you get back to it after we have to come up once more at the conclusion of the uh, of the general intercessions. So it's very good. We had to walk all around to find this book because we haven't used it in years. But it's good to be able to have Emily's name right in here. And she'll be all set for the uh, Easter Vigil. Please stand and now I have a brief. I believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all the things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, rose again the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended to heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Amen. This is the time of fulfillment, for the kingdom of God is at hand. If we're to repent and believe in the gospel, then we must bring to him our prayers to the needs of the world. Our response is, merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For our church, throughout these 40 days of Lent, that Christians may avoid the lure of temptation and seek the way of righteousness, remembering the constant love we pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in our world, especially for places where people hoard food and prevent the hungry from eating. For your peacekeeping troops in the military, our first responders and essential workers, remembering your constant love, we pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are incarcerated, for those imprisoned by addictions to drugs, alcohol, gambling, technology, pornography, for adequate funding in the treatment process, and for the healing for all victims, Remembering your constant love, we pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For us, as we begin this Lenten journey, for strength to overcome temptations that hurt our relationship with God, others, and creation, for reconciliation of all broken relationships, and for a greater awareness of Jesus' presence in our lives. Remembering your constant love, we pray. Merciful Lord, hear our prayer. For the elect of our church, Emily Dipp. 
that those preparing for the waters of baptism at Easter may spend this Lenten journey seeking to let go of worldly attachment and frivolous desires. Remembering your constant love, we pray. Merciful Lord, your honor. For the eradication of the coronavirus and safety of the vaccine, for all who are sick in mind, body, and spirit, for all who have died, especially Geraldine Calarasso and Edna Holland, who are being remembered during this Mass. Also, please remember the souls of those who died recently, Terry Suolo, Reverend Michael Lee, Reverend Anthony Patrizio, and Angela Ungaro. Remembering your constant love, we pray. Merciful Lord, your prayer. And for the conclusion of the uh, first position, we'll have that special blessing of Emily and her husband. Father of love and power, it is your will to establish everything in Christ and draw us into his all-embracing love. Guide the elect of your church and strengthen them in their vocation. Build them into the kingdom of your Son and seal them with the spirit of your promise. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. There are a few announcements this morning. <clears throat> we will have a 6.30 p.m. Mass every Tuesday evening during Lent prior to the uh, Rosary for Peace, which meets every Tuesday at 7 p.m. Stations of the Cross will be held Fridays during Lent in the church at 7 p.m. Our Lenten Night of Recollection will be held on Thursday evening, March 4th at 7 p.m. with Monsignor Michael Mannion. The Women's Club invites all ladies of the parish to attend a night of reflection this Wednesday evening, February 24th at 6.30 p.m. Please see the bulletin for further details on this event. We will have an extra time for confessions every Wednesday during Lent. This Wednesday, the time will be 6 to 6.30 p.m. Starting Wednesday, March 3rd, the time for confession will be 7 p.m. The front church lobby bathroom is temporarily closed due to repairs. Please use the bathrooms in St. Philip's Hall if necessary. The Knights of Columbus will have a blood drive on Saturday, February 27th from 9 to 2 p.m. by appointment only. COVID restriction protocols will be followed and masks are required. Contact the American Red Cross for more information or to make an appointment at 1-800-RED-CROSS. And finally, please take home a bulletin or read our bulletin online for all other information about our parish. Thank you.
pray, my brothers, as to my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Give us the right dispositions, O Lord, we pray, to make these offerings, for with them we celebrate the beginning of this venerable and sacred time through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with you Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, is to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. By abstaining forty long days from earthly food, he consecrated through his fast the pattern of our Lenten observance, and by overturning all the snares of the ancient serpent, taught us to cast out the leaven of malice, so that celebrating worthily the Paschal mystery, we might pass over at last to the eternal Paschal feast. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you've held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring it to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Dennis our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may always, free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For Jesus Christ said to your apostles, Peace I leave and my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church 
and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. heavenly bread by which this nourished hope is increased and charity strengthened we pray O Lord that we may learn to hunger for Christ the true and living bread and strive to live by every word which proceeds from your mouth through Christ our Lord Amen. the Lord be with you Amen. and Almighty God bless you the Father Son and the Holy Spirit Amen. the Mass is ended go in peace thanks be to God